is going to talk about dr vinita is a dynamic glaucoma surgeon she uh, heads the glaucoma unit at aims rishikesh and she will be uh, talking about uh, that um, uh, how do i make the right choice and choosing the right surgery for our glaucoma patients dr vinita uh, good afternoon everyone Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So as uh, Dr. Parul has said, so I'll be uh, talking about which surgery to choose for your glaucoma patient. And obviously, as Sir, uh, Dr. Das has already enlisted the options which we have, starting from trabeclectomies, which is obviously the gold standard, the tube shunts, the uh, minimally invasive glaucoma surgery, some of which he has named, and the cyclodestructive procedures, which may be required in certain cases. And with the, on, with the recent introduction of the micropulse, which may be used in, as an adjunct to uh, other surgeries. So you have to look for what surgery is going to be ideal for your glaucoma patient. As we all know, when do we plan surgery for the patient? Obviously, when his IOP is not being, uh, is not coming close to the target IOP and his uh, optimiopathy is progressing. And, uh, or there is non-compliance or uh, any side effects of the drugs, or we can do as like the primary tube versus the uh, 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 trap surgery said, we can do it as a primary treatment also for a certain group of patients. But for each patient, we have to do a case-to-case -case analysis and a risk-to-benefit -ben ratio has to be done, assessing his structural changes and his functional uh, affection of the optic nerve before we take the decision with surgery. Whatever surgery we are choosing, the goal of the surgery is that we should have minimal complications, a good long-term IOP control, precisely tra trying to reach closer to the target IOP and avoiding any visual impairment. So factors which we take into consideration when we have to do is the type of glaucoma, obviously, whether it is an angle closure glaucoma or an open angle glaucoma, whether it is a primary or a secondary glaucoma, whether it is a primary surgery or it's a repeat surgery, what is the status of the conjunctiva? Conjunctiva should be healthy. Is it scarred? Has it has suffered any other uh, disease? Or as like sir, sir mentioned, there is an ocular surface disorder or a secretorial pemphigoid uh, sitting there. Obviously, a patient cannot have a conjunctival-based surgeries. Do we need to combine it with the cataract surgeries or any other procedure? What is the risk of complications for that pa patient? What is the risk of his progression? And what is his target IOP? All this has to be taken into consideration besides the surgeon's own comfort level. And the other important factors is the age of the patient. What is his already visual prognosis? What is his uh, life expectancy for that particular patient? All this also needs to be discussed with the patient before we go ahead with a surgical plan for the patient. So an ideal procedure should be anything for anything uh, which is fast, easy, low cost, low risk of complications, less stressful to the patient, repeatable, and with minimal complications. So, and it should also be at the same time able to achieve a target IOPs with minimal circadian rhythms without any adjunctive use of uh, anti glaucoma medications, m preserving the visual function of the patient at all times, and a very long term success of almost 10 year success rate is what we are expecting for an ideal procedure. For glaucoma surgery, it is not as simple, uh, the decision making is not as simple as that for a cataract surgery. Why? This is because even when the surgery goes well, the post-operative period is fraught with complications and patient may not be very happy. This is because patients, like for a cataract, they, they may be expecting that they'll start seeing better, but this is not the case for a glaucoma surgery. So in fact, there may be transient vision losses occurring after surgery. There may be development of cataract, okay? Besides this, eyes of the patients are continuously red and irritable for a few days, for a few months after the surgeries. They on, always do not understand the need for surgery because obviously, as you know, glaucoma is a silent disease. The risks of surgery, when explained to them, they tend to move towards a non-surgical option if, unless until they're uh, explained in the severity of the disease. And especially when we explain them the vision-threatening complications and need for going and doing revisits to the uh, operating room after the surgery. So, as Dr. Das mentioned, trabeclectomy, and as it is known in the glaucoma, to all the glaucoma specialists, is the gold standard as a primary surgery when we are doing it, except for a few cases, which I'll be telling, which cases not to do, choose trabeclectomy as a primary surgeries. It has a high success rate, especially when we have taken care of all the modifications which are now being taken, uh, introduced along with the uh, trabeclectomies, with the phonis-based flaps, use of antifibrotic agents, and various suture techniques. 
So the cause uh, technique, which basically uh, uh, as is depicted in this figure, using a larger treatment area for your antifibrotics, using tight adjustable sutures or using releasable sutures, using a larger scleral flap, not cutting close to the limbus, a single punch of sclerostomy to give a, a good inner sclerostomy. So all these technique uh, maneuvers which are done within while uh, planning your trabeculectomy will help you in enhancing the success of your trabeculectomy. The conflict which remains is mainly whether to combine it with cataract surgery and whether to use antifibrotics or not. So as we all know, the main cause of failure, early failure for a uh, filtering surgery as well as for late failures is the fibroblastic proliferation which is uh, taking place. So important challenge is to prevent this. And obviously besides the anti-metabolite drugs, which is the F5-FU uh, as well as the mitomycin C, we also have the amniotic membranes available now as well as the uh, ologen uh, spacer which is available. As Sir rightly mentioned, the trabeculectomy, if it is done as a nave technique without the use of any antifibrotic agents, almost 27% uh, so patients tend to fail within the first year. And with the use of adjunctive uh, antifibrotic agents, we can re reduce this uh, failure rate. Obviously, it has been seen a single application of mitomycin C intraoperatively is much superior to postoperative applications and injections of 5-FUs. So it now, in uh, most of the cases, it has become an adjunct. A use of uh, intraoperative mitomycin C has become an adjunct to trabeculectomies. But for this, where, where, what percentage to use, what time, how much time to use, and in what cases not to use, we have to assess two things, the risk of failure for that particular patient and the risk of post-op infection for that particular patient. So obviously, wherever the risk of blood failure is high, I will use mitomycin C, even in the intimated cases, I will go with a lesser dose and a lesser uh, 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 time for mitomycin uh, C intra, uh, intraoperative application. But if there is a high risk of infection, as I said in my cases, or diabetes, immunocompromised cases, or those with the lid, uh, lid uh, diseases, in those cases, obviously, I would avoid antimetabolites. And also, uh, we have to take care wherever uh, we have, like I said, uh, it is not fraught without complications the use of mitomycin C as well. So we may land up with a weeping bleb, a leaky bleb, increased blebitis. So in order to overcome that, we had something called as, which is now uh, augmented augmentation of trabeculectomy using amniotic membrane transplants, which are because based on these properties of anti-fibrosis, anti-inflammatory action, anti-angiogenic action, all these actions of amniotic membrane have uh, brought this amniotic membrane as an adjunct, uh, adjunctive use within the table academy where it does not require much of the uh, modification to your techniques, but it gives you a better uh, diffusely elevated bleb with low vascularity, fewer post-op interventions as compared to mitomycin C, lesser time, and just needs to incorporate as an extra step during your surgery. It's, is it readily available as a dried, in a dried form? And it can be done as a primary procedure, or you can add it with a mitomycin C, depending on the patient's high risk uh, uh, of blood failure. It can be used, again, subconjunctival or subscleral, as we use for mitomycin C, and anchoring sutures can be applied to it. To, or we can use uh, something called as ologen implants, which, again, have given a good success rate in, uh, in some cases. Ologen implants is, again, like a biodegradable collagen uh, matrix which is basically there were many studies done to see whether what is its efficacy as compared to mitomycin C. And a meta-analysis on this found that it is a safe and effective procedure in patients with glaucoma. However, it does not have any significant advantages. The cost issue is slightly uh, uh, much, um, obviously, as compared to mitomycin C, it is more expensive. But obviously, uh, it does not offer you more advantages, but it is not disadvantages as well if the patient does not have cost issues. Expressions also came, but obviously expressions had a lot of complications to be used as an adjunct along with trabeculectomy. So obviously they, are, they had late complications and the success uh, and were also expensive. So they have gone out of use as an adjunct to trabeculectomies. Now the second important surgery which we do as a glaucoma surgeon is our tube surgeries, is the most common alternative choice. So all complicated cases of glaucoma, which I have listed here, obviously secondary glaucomas, secondary uveitis, post-PKs, neovascular, those with associated with Sturge Weber syndrome, with eye syndromes, or with previous multiple failed trabeculectomies, with extensive conjunctival scarring, those with ocular surface disease, or if you get glaucoma where I cannot do a trabeculectomy, I have to do a tube chunk surgery. Now, which uh, implant to use, uh, which uh, tube to use, whether a valve implant, a Ahmed valve, or a non-valve, a bare valve implant. So there are various studies which have compared these, and they have found the efficacy is of a bare valve implant as compared to IOP control is better in these studies for three-year follow-up. However, the complications associated with Ahmed implant are much less and occur less frequently. Now, the third option which we have is what after, what in those cases where the patient already has had a primary surgery. So if the primary surgery is a trap or a primary surgery is a tube. Now, if my primary surgery has been a trap, then I have to do, take the patient for a repeat surgery because of, the cause, because of his failing or his progressive optic neuropathies. 
do we need to do an another similar surgery or do we go ahead with a uh, filtering uh, do go ahead with the tube so again if i we look at the results of the primary tube and the primary trap surgery it showed that tubes ha also had excellent results but remember when we are doing a primary uh, repeat trap in a case when the conjunctiva is good my second choice will always again remain a trap if my primary trap has failed because uh, i have the chances of doing blip revisions and i can always go back and do a trap a uh, tube if the secondary trap also fails but if i do a tube as a first surgery i do not have the option of doing a trap later on so obviously the second choice i'm going to a dead end in the sense that i'll be forced to do either a tube again a tube if my first tube surgery fails or i'll be forced to do a cyclodestructive procedure to bring the iop under control or bring the glaucoma of the patient uh, prevent the glaucoma of the patient from progressing uh sir has already given a brief, uh, overview of the evolving uh, micro uh, invasive uh, micro invasive or minimally invasive glaucoma surgeries as we call them which include the non penetrating uh, drainage surgeries like uh, deep sclerectomies these are only for the patients who have mild to moderate glaucomas they cannot be done for patients with advanced glaucomas so they are only helpful in the early stage of diseases they require special instrument instrumentation and obviously the cost cost issues are there so mostly procedures which are being done nowadays are the trabectomy and the use of eye stents and canaloplasties uh what is the role of these is more in combination when we are doing a cataract surgery in these patients and especially when we are in patients with mild to moderate glaucoma we can do this microinvasive surgeries along with the cataract surgeries as a single procedure rather than doing a, a separate surgeries the last thing which i'll just talk about is the cataract com combination of cataract surgery with a trabeclectomies the results and the studies have shown that the success rate of a combined surgery is usually not as favorable as a filtration surgery alone so if you have to do a combined surgery it is better to do uh, them as separate surgeries so as to have a better enhancement better success of vitreoplectomies and nowadays with the micropulse uh, uh, laser you can even do as a micropulse laser as an adjunct while the patient is waiting to your uh, before your trabeclectomy or before your tube 